A black engineer walks into her company's private lounge, only to be told to wait outside like she doesn't belong. They never checked her badge, never saw her title. Moments later, she makes one phone call, and the entire company comes to a halt. What they didn't know? She wasn't just another employee. She was the mastermind behind their biggest success. What happens next will leave the entire room silent. The morning air in Toulouse was crisp, carrying the faint hum of jet engines from the nearby Airbus testing grounds. Dr. Maya Bennett adjusted her scarf as she stepped out of her sleek black sedan, her heels clicking against the pavement of the sprawling aerospace campus. At 38, she was a striking figure, tall, with sharp cheekbones and skin the color of rich mahogany. Her eyes, framed by a pair of minimalist glasses, held a quiet intensity that could unsettle anyone who underestimated her, and people often did. She approached the glass and steel facade of Aerolith Dynamics, the cutting-edge firm where she'd spent the last decade of her life. Today was no ordinary day. After months of grueling simulations and sleepless nights, the Orion X project, her brainchild, was nearing its final phase. A reusable spacecraft capable of slashing launch costs by half, it was the kind of innovation that could redefine humanity's reach into the stars. And Maya, as the lead aerospace engineer, was the linchpin holding it all together. The lobby buzzed with activity. Engineers in crisp polos, executives in tailored suits, and security guards stationed like sentinels. Maya swiped her badge at the turnstile and made her way toward the restricted research wing. The double doors loomed ahead, marked with a stark red sign, authorized personnel only. She reached for the keypad, but before her fingers could graze the numbers, a voice cut through the air. Excuse me, ma'am. Employees aren't allowed in here. Please wait outside. Maya froze, her hand hovering midair. She turned slowly to face the source, a stocky security guard with a buzz cut and a badge that read P. Leclerc. His tone was clipped, his pale blue eyes narrowing as they flicked over her. No hesitation, no doubt. Just a wall of certainty. I'm Dr. Maya Bennett, she said evenly, reaching into her coat pocket for her ID. Lead engineer on Orion X. I have clearance. Leclerc didn't budge. I don't know anything about that. No one's told me you're on the list. Step back, please. Maya's jaw tightened, but she kept her composure. She'd been here before, too many times to count. The assumptions, the dismissals, the invisible barriers that seemed to materialize whenever she walked into a room. She held out her ID, the holographic seal glinting under the fluorescent lights. Check it. You'll see. He didn't even glance at it. I don't need to. If you're not on my list, you're not getting in. Wait outside or I'll call backup. A few heads turned in the lobby. Curious engineers. A receptionist peering over her desk. Maya felt the familiar burn of humiliation creeping up her neck. But she swallowed it down. She wasn't here to beg. She was here to work. With a measured breath, she stepped back pulled out her phone and dialed a number she rarely used. Jean-Paul, she said when the line picked up. It's Maya. I'm at the lab entrance. They won't let me in. There was a pause, then a low chuckle from Jean-Paul Dubois, the CTO of Aerolith Dynamics. What? That's absurd. Stay put. I'll handle it. She hung up and leaned against the wall, arms crossed, her gaze fixed on Leclerc. He shifted uncomfortably, sensing something was off, but too stubborn to back down. Two minutes later, the double doors swung open and Jean-Paul strode out, silver-haired, impeccably dressed, and radiating authority. His eyes landed on Leclerc first. What's the meaning of this? he demanded. Leclerc straightened. Sir, she's not on the list. She's Dr. Maya Bennett, 
John Paul snapped, cutting him off. The architect of Orion X. She doesn't need to be on your damn list. She wrote the book on this project. Apologize. Now. Leclerc's face flushed red, his mouth opening and closing like a fish out of water. I... I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't know. Maya met his gaze, her expression unreadable. You didn't ask. Jean-Paul gestured toward the doors. Come on, Maya. We've got work to do. She followed him inside, leaving Leclerc rooted to the spot. But the incident gnawed at her. It wasn't just about one guard. It was the pattern, the way her credentials were questioned, her presence doubted, her authority dismissed. She'd seen it in boardrooms, on factory floors, even in the academic halls of MIT, where she'd earned her PhD. And here, in the heart of Europe's aerospace capital, it was no different. The research lab was a marvel. Holographic displays flickering with telemetry data, 3D printers humming as they churned out prototype parts. Her team greeted her with nods and smiles, oblivious to the scene outside. But Maya's mind was already racing beyond the day's tasks. This wasn't just about getting in the door. It was about who got to decide who belonged and who didn't. Inside the restricted lab, the air was thick with the scent of solder and the hum of machinery. Maya slipped into her white coat, her fingers brushing the embroidered nameplate. Dr. M. Bennett, chief engineer. She moved to her workstation, a sleek console overlooking the Orion X prototype, a gleaming marvel of titanium and carbon fiber suspended in a testing rig. Her team buzzed around her, calibrating sensors and running diagnostics, but her mind lingered on Leclerc's words. Employees aren't allowed in here. She shook it off, or tried to. Focus was her armor, and she'd spent years forging it. She pulled up the latest telemetry data, her eyes scanning the numbers. Something was off. The thruster efficiency had dipped by 3% since the last test. Not catastrophic, but enough to raise a flag. She flagged it for review and turned to her deputy, Elise Moreau, a wiry French woman with a knack for spotting flaws. Elise, run a cross-check on the fuel injectors. This shouldn't be happening. Elise nodded, her fingers flying over her tablet. On it. Could be a calibration glitch. As the team dug into the anomaly, Jean-Paul approached, his expression a mix of irritation and concern. Maya, I've spoken to security. Leclerc's been reprimanded. It won't happen again. She met his gaze, her voice steady. It's not about Leclerc. It's about why he didn't even check my ID. You know what that's about. Jean-Paul sighed, running a hand through his silver hair. People make assumptions. It's ignorance, not malice. We'll fix it. Ignorance doesn't stop at the door, Jean-Paul. It's in the walls here. She gestured vaguely at the lab, the company, the world beyond. I've been proving myself since I walked in ten years ago. When does it end? He didn't have an answer, and she didn't expect one. Jean-Paul was a good man, progressive, sharp, but even he couldn't see the weight she carried every day. He clapped her shoulder and moved off to oversee another team, leaving her with her thoughts. Hours later, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Maya stayed late, poring over schematics. The thruster issue wasn't a glitch. It traced back to a last-minute design tweak she hadn't authorized. She cross-referenced the logs and found the culprit, a directive from Vincent Kessler, the VP of Operations. Kessler was a relic, old money, older prejudices, and a vocal skeptic of outsiders in the industry. He'd never liked Maya, and the feeling was mutual. She leaned back, staring at the ceiling. This wasn't just sloppy engineering. It was sabotage. Subtle, deniable, but sabotage nonetheless. And she had a sinking feeling it was personal. The next morning, 
Maya marched into the executive wing, her laptop tucked under her arm. The plush carpets and wood-paneled walls felt like a different world from the lab's sterile chaos. She didn't knock when she reached Kessler's office, just pushed the door open and stepped inside. Vincent Kessler looked up from his desk, his bushy eyebrows lifting in surprise. He was a broad man, his suit straining at the shoulders, his face weathered by decades of boardroom battles. Dr. Bennett, he said, his German accent clipping the words. To what do I owe this interruption? She set her laptop down and opened it, pulling up the thruster data. You overrode my design specs on Orion X. The injectors are failing because of it. Explain. Kessler leaned back, a faint smirk tugging at his lips. I approved an optimization, cost-saving measure. The board signed off on it. The board doesn't know a thruster from a toaster, she shot back. This wasn't optimization. It's a downgrade. We're three weeks from the demo, and you're risking everything. He steepled his fingers, his smirk fading. Careful, Maya. You're good at what you do, but you don't run this company. I do. There it was. The condescension she'd heard a thousand times. She'd faced it in grad school when professors assumed she'd cheated her way to top marks in job interviews where her resume was double-checked while her white peers sailed through. And now, from a man who'd rather tank a billion euro project than admit she was right. I don't need to run the company, she said, her voice low and sharp. I just need Orion X to fly. Undo the change or I'll take this to the board myself, Kessler's eyes narrowed. You think you can threaten me? I've been here since before you were born. You're lucky to even have a seat at this table. The words hung between them, heavy with unspoken meaning. Lucky. As if her degrees, her patents, her sleepless nights were handouts. She closed her laptop with a snap. We'll see who's lucky when the demo fails. She left without another word, her pulse pounding. Back in the lab, she rallied her team working late into the night to reverse Kessler's meddling. But the encounter lit a fire in her. This wasn't just about thrusters. It was about control. Kessler didn't just want her project to stumble. He wanted her gone. Digging deeper, she found emails buried in the company server, Kessler lobbying to replace her with a more suitable lead, citing cultural fit. The subtext was clear. A black woman from Chicago didn't belong at the helm of Europe's next space breakthrough. She saved the files, her resolve hardening. If Kessler wanted a fight, he'd get one. The demo day arrived, a high-stakes showcase at the Toulouse airfield, attended by investors, government officials, and media from across the continent. The Orion X stood gleaming on the tarmac its sleek lines cutting a silhouette against the dawn sky. Maya stood with her team, her navy blazer crisp, her expression calm despite the storm brewing inside. Kessler was there too, schmoozing with suits, his confidence unshaken. He'd tried to sideline her in the final prep, but Jean-Paul had intervened, ensuring she stayed in charge. The tension between them crackled like static. As the countdown began, Maya's phone buzzed, a message from an anonymous source. Check the secondary fuel line, now. She frowned, then signaled Elise to run a last-second diagnostic. Sure enough, the line showed signs of tampering, enough to cause a mid-flight failure. Kessler's doing? She couldn't prove it, but she didn't need to. She ordered a fix, her team scrambling as the clock ticked down. The launch went off without a hitch. Orion X roared into the sky, a streak of silver against the blue, then executed a perfect landing 20 minutes later. The crowd erupted, cheers, applause, champagne corks popping. Maya's name was on every tongue, her face destined for headlines. But she wasn't done. 
That evening at the gala, she cornered Kessler in a quiet hallway. She held up a USB drive, the emails, the tampering evidence, everything. Resign, she said, or this goes public. His face paled. You wouldn't dare. You'll ruin yourself, too. I've survived worse than you, she replied. Try me. He stared at her, then turned and walked away, his shoulders slumping. The next day, his resignation hit the news. An early retirement. No scandal, no mess. Just a quiet exit. Weeks later, Maya stood on her apartment balcony overlooking Toulouse, a glass of wine in hand. Orion X was greenlit for production, her legacy secured. But the victory felt bittersweet. Leclerc still manned the gate. Kessler's allies still whispered in the halls, and the world beyond Aerolith was no kinder. Racism didn't vanish with one win. It lingered, subtle and insidious, waiting for the next fight. She thought of her parents, immigrants who'd scraped by in Chicago, telling her she'd have to be twice as good to get half as far. They'd been right. And yet, here she was, rewriting the stars. Her phone buzzed, a job offer from a rival firm in Stockholm, a chance to start fresh. She didn't reply. Not yet. The sky stretched wide above her, full of possibilities and questions. Could she change the game from the inside, or was it time to build something new? The answer wasn't clear, but for the first time she felt the weight of choice in her hands. And that, she knew, was power.